Hi. All right. Well, welcome <laughs> back to the uh, science lab area here. Um, in my continuing quest to just make uh, the science demo uh, an opportunity for Nate, Beck, and I to eat something, um, we're going to be doing fossils uh, today. And we're going to be looking at fossils, sort of creating a, a, a fossil demonstration. And it's an edible fossil demonstration. OK, so guys, uh, we got a little bit of time before this chocolate solids up here. I need you to help me create the prehistoric landscape. Absolutely. Okay. So I use the tectonic plates. These are actually, we're just going to call this the, the rock layer that's already been deposited. OK, so what I need you guys to do is create a layer of graham crackers. Right. Uh, on the floor so of this pyramid. Bottom. So uh, we're just going to imagine, you know, so, so uh, thinking about fossils, what we want to think about is the environment where the fossil was deposited or, or, or formed um, and how that formation took place. So we're going to imagine that the, the graham crackers are just a, a normal earth landscape floor and we're going to add some uh, things to fossilize. So um, we have some edible things and then one non-edible thing. So um, we're going to add some gummy worms, which we're going we're gonna to pretend they're Titanoboas, which are like ancient, gigantic snakes. Oh, nice. Like the most frightening land dwelling creature ever to live. Will you guys spread the Titanoboas out? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very exciting. So we want to get lots of different opportunity for fossil. Oh, yeah. And let's get this out of the way so we can get a full, the oh, full effect for our started. viewers at home. All right. Oh, so you guys yeah. can see. So I'm actually just joking about Titanoboas. The, the, mm -hmm. uh, Gummy worms are just going to help us, so they'll, they'll be something we can fossilize here and sort of see the effect of, of fossilization. Um, I just have this really cool student that was telling you today about Titanoba, was it? Huh. Gigantic ancient snakes. Sweet. Um, these are non edible dinosaurs that I'm going to have you guys set around. Go ahead and just uh, you know, put them in some different places there. Um, and then when we actually eat this thing, guys, you're just going to have to be careful not to. <laughs> when, we, when we excavate, I should say. Don't eat the dinosaurs. You can excavate and eat the, the titanoboas, but not the, not the uh, gummy bears. And then finally, I thought we'd add a few uh, you know, ancient rock boulders to the landscape, because you know, landscapes tend to have boulders all around. So I got us a variety of nuts to represent boulders on the landscape. So Nate, you Pour can some just, in there. Yeah, let's just, you know. This looks like a great ancient landscape. You can just see <laughs> dinosaurs this is just exactly what it loving like. it. They're frolicking mm -hmm. all throughout the land. <laughs> da, da, da. It's begging to be eaten. Yeah. Um, so, and and when we when we think about fossil deposition, we'll talk a little bit more about this in a second once we've actually deposited these fossils. Um, but what we what we need are an ideal set of circumstances where we get what's called quick burial of fossils. So we're going to quickly bury um, these fossils by imagining a couple different. Uh, um, events that might have taken place, okay? So let's start with, let's start with that all these dinosaurs are dead, okay? Um, they, they passed <laughs> away from some freak incident, it could have been a disease that ripped through the dino and titanoboa community, and they're all just dead and lying in this area. Now, if they're left exposed to the oxygen, they're all just going to decay and die. But they happen to live near the beach, and we're going to create some, like, sandy dunes that roll over them by pouring a little bit of peanut butter onto them. <laughs> now, I, uh, we're just going to pretend this is, right, sand, like, blowing over. But really, I know it looks like Sam, you got to tell me what beach you go to. Yeah, I know. <laughs> sand, right? <laughs> it's peanut butter. Uh, that's a, that's such a great beach. beach. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Water's Delicious. Made out of flowing chocolate. So, yeah, we'll just <laughs> pretend this. I was really hoping to get the peanut butter more flowy. Um, but I got all natural peanut butter, which is just, you know, it's one of those things. You go to the grocery store, you buy all natural, you regret it later because it doesn't work in your science experiment. But we're just going to pretend like some of that area was covered by uh, sand blowing in from the sand dunes. That's something that could happen relatively quickly. And then I have uh, flowy candy chocolate uh, to represent. Now, now, here's the thing. Ideally, what we would do is, is some kind of sediment deposit, like we would do lots of something like sand, or I was thinking about grinding up chocolate to make like a chocolate powder. But we want it to set in time to actually see this. So what we're going to pretend is that there's a volcano right nearby, and we get very quick lava flow that covers up our dinosaur. So who wants to be the volcano? Oh, me, me, I feel like me. Becca <laughs> definitely yeah. the volcano. Volcano. So Volcano Becca is just going to totally cover the landscape in... Uh, you know, chocolate Chocolatey rock. goodness. Chocolatey oh, goodness. Oh, yum. <laughs> All right. So, oh. Becca, if you could just completely. Oh, this volcano smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, a, this is one of the nicer volcanoes around. Oh, yeah. Look at that stuff. So, as we get this uh, going here, what we're going to do is I'm going to pass this uh, landscape off to one of our producers off on the side here. Um, he's going to stick it in the fridge for us and have it solid up a little bit, and we can actually pull the fossils out of it later. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about, about how fossils would be exposed. 
And then in the meantime, what I'll do is I'm actually want to show you guys some real fossils Ooh. that I brought from home. Oh, um, cool. My roommate is a paleontologist, and so we have a really incredible collection of fossils at my house. So I'm kind of lucky <laughs> in that sense, and I just wanted to show you some. You just get to like just to hang you out with fossils all day. I just yeah. There was this one time when we used to have a, a, a fo the footprint of uh, uh, something related to a brontosaurus, I think it was, oh, wow. um, just oh in our living room, a gigantic rock that was the footprint of that. That's pretty awesome. Waiting to go to a museum for research. Oh, I guess this is trash. <laughs> so let's uh, right. just lava pass this off right to my producer there. here. No fear. Mm -hmm. All right, the magic of television, guys. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then while we're doing that, uh, Becca, could you carefully hand me that box behind you? Filled oh. with fossil or, or Perfect. All the way across, here you go. This off, so wow. yeah. Chocolate on the bottom. And what we'll do is I'll hold these over here and I'll pass them up and then uh, Nate and Becca, since you're probably in the best position, I'll have you guys uh, hold them up for the camera here. So okay. let's make sure I'm not blocking anything. Um, okay, so um, there's different types of fossils, right? And, and uh, maybe the most basic one is the one that we're going to sort of make with our uh, uh, chocolate demonstration, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got these little dinosaurs and worms, right? They're going to get covered in chocolate. And when the chocolate hardens and if we were able to you know, open it up and pull out the, the dinosaur or the worm, we'd be left with essentially a mold of that uh, uh, creature. Um, so uh, molds, uh, and, then, and then what fills the mold, so if you have rocks fill the mold, that would be something called a cast. What I have right here is, which one, this is my e echinoid, so this would be like a, uh, a sea urchin type creature. And you can see, if you look right there, you can see the shell of the sea creature that's uh, preserved all around it, and then um, it's been filled in from the inside. So we have uh, essentially a, a mold and then the cast is the stuff that filled in on the inside. So this is just the, the cast. Yeah, and it's it. just, and if you've seen so, like a sea urchin, it's just the body of it without mm -hmm. all the spikes. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Kind of neat, right? Um, now, one thing, and let's look at another one here. So, so again, we think a lot of times as fossils about, uh, of fossils as being imprints. Mm -hmm. So we, we're hopefully gonna see some imprints of the things that we left in the, in the chocolate peanut butter mess. Um, what, are, what are these? I think you guys should be able to tell, and then maybe you can show the camera. Uh, leaves. leaves. Yeah, those yeah. are ancient leaves. Um, so are, the, are these actual leaves? Those are actual preserved leaves. Well, so um, what those are, those are the imprints of leaves, and then the leaves were there, right? But then something happens to um, fossil remnants, uh, or, or the remnants of organisms as they're fossilized. Um, their cells are replaced by minerals in a process called permineralization. So what we have there is minerals that have replaced those leaves mm -hmm. and left essentially the cell structure of the leaves intact in the form of minerals. Um, so you can imagine if, a, if a leaves like that were to be buried underground, water could seep into that area, and that water mm -hmm. would have some minerals in it. And those okay. minerals would just start to sense. fill the holes in the living organisms. Pretty cool, cool. right? Yeah. yeah. Really All right. Cool. So we've got a couple others to show you here. Another uh, uh, really great kind of fossil you can see, especially in the West, is petrified wood. Mm -hmm. So you guys can see here, and maybe show the camera for me, um, you can very clearly oh, see like, it, the grain of the wood. It's a rock. But though. it's a rock, right? Like you can hmm. feel that this is, this is not light like wood, right? And that goes through the same process, right? Yeah, so, so petrified oh, wood yeah. has to be permineralized. So you've got the, the cells of the tree, uh, the parts of them being replaced by minerals themselves. And it's, it's cool because you can really see that ancient, uh, uh, a grain of the wood, but every bit of it, or, or the vast majority of it, has been replaced by uh, minerals. Yeah, you wow. can, um, it almost looks like bark on the back side. Yeah, it does. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty great, right? Um, so this one's kind of cool. This is a bivalve. Um, so this is, uh, again, the body fossil uh, of an animal. Um, do you guys know what a bivalve is? It's uh, like a sea sponge? Like a, a clam, actually. A clam. More like clam. Yeah. So you can see these are actually the two sides of the mouth. of a gi It's a gigantic bivalve that would have, I don't know the exact size of it, but much Wait, larger these, than that where's rock. Where's the sides of the that's mouth? That's like a cross section, right? Like yeah. this would be like the opening there. Oh. Do you see that? And so yeah, that's, this and this. Bivalves are shells that have, are, are sea, sea creatures that have two shells. So how do you think they know, I mean, if you just found this piece or is it just yeah. a piece of a bigger, how do they oh, know Oh, I'm so glad you asked bivalve. that. So yeah. um, folks like my roommate, who are paleontologists, mm -hmm. are really well studied in the, the morphology and history of these things. And they look, so, so you have to think back in the day, paleontologists were looking for any analog to modern life. Mm -hmm. So if they saw something that looked like a bone, they could relate it to uh, a bone that they might have found that was fossilized. Bivalves that we see today, there's structures in bivalves that we see today that mimic the structures that we see there. Okay. I'm not a paleontologist, so the, the finer details escape me. Um, but my roommate, Kate, with very little uh, uh, 
information other than just the visual piece can often make good predictions about what kind of an organism you have. I guess that makes sense. If you're very well trained, you have a good eye for that, you would immediately see that. Whereas I just see this as kind of a right. It looks like a just a pretty a pretty like yeah. nice rock. <laughs> right, like a nice thing in the rock. <laughs> well, here, let me show you. So then we've got some. So these are gastropods. These are uh, fossilized gastropods. Um, so we've got a planispiral gastropod that Nate's holding, and then a, what are they called? A trochospiral gastropod that Becca's holding. Trochospiral is kind of the classic uh, uh, snail shell, and then Nate's snail shell is sort of flat, or it, it moves, it spirals yeah. along a single plane. Um, yeah. So those guys are a little bit tiny there. Um, okay, these ones are really cool, but again, kind of hard to, to see. Um, so these are dinosaur bones. What? Um, yeah, so we don't know exactly what kind of dinosaur bones, um, but they have, uh, you can see sort of the outer part of the bone, and then you can see, if you look in here, uh, this is sort of the inner part of the bone that would have been remineralized. Again, hard to, hard to see. Right. Yeah, if I just really read across this in, in nature, I really would just be, oh, You would oh, just think it was a rock, rock right? It's yeah, I'd probably rock. chuck it across a lake and, and that see is if I could often, skip it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is often my experience with these things. You know, Kate has to point, my roommate Kate has to point out to me what exactly I'm looking at and seeing. Um, but I can see here that this area, so bones are spongy on the inside, so the spongy in, inner part of the bone would have been filled in with minerals. Uh, mm -hmm. the minerals would have been deposited and turned into rocks there. And then you would have the outer part of the bone remain. So this is actual Still, bone. And yeah, this it would does be, feel uh, like. The, the porous inside that would have been refilled. Right. Um, it's funny because when I think about dinosaur fossils, I think of this giant, like, femur bone or something. Like, that's yes, very obvious, absolutely. But obviously and like a lot of the time. Of years are gonna, Yes, and, and there, there are those kinds of bones, and originally that's what fossil hunting was, is it was finding a really obvious one. So mm -hmm. is this still um, bone on the outside, technically? There's at least still uh, molecules of the minerals that made up the bone, but some of those minerals may have been replaced with rock minerals like silica. Um, so there's not much of the uh, osteoclast, I guess, would technically be the right term. There may be a, a significant amount of it left. I don't okay. actually know. Um, these are ammonites, which are spiral-shelled uh, creatures. You can see there, again, uh, there's, shell, there's a little bit of shell fragment around the outside. Oh, like this? Yeah, that's, uh, oh, and those are the sutures on the inside um, that have been, there's been a little bit oh, of cool. rock filling in. Yeah, I don't know if we can see that very well. Um, but you can see, so, you know, uh, uh, portions of the, the structure of the organism are, are preserved. And what's so great about this is, you know, this is literally a way for us to see what used to live in the past. It can, you know, thing, information about uh, creatures from the present can inform us about creatures from the past, but then those creatures from the past can inform us about what life would have been like at the time, what the environment would have been like at the time. And this um, is how we're going to recreate dinosaurs. And, and that's the other thing. Is the Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Right, right, yeah, yeah exactly. My, uh, mosquitoes caught inside of amber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I just have a couple more here. Uh, this is a brachiopod, uh, which is just a, a type of seashell. You can pass it around, you can see pretty obviously that it's a seashell, but it's been all remineralized. And then this one I love, this is a soft shell turtle shell or tortoise shell. Oh, cool. Um, so really pretty, but again, <coughs> fairly simple looking. Were most of these found here, or are they from all over the um, place? All over uh, Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming, okay. um, which are the main places that my roommate works as a paleontologist. So this is m proof that Colorado at one time had uh, was underwater. At some yeah, point. yeah, and, and Colorado, uh, uh, the area that is today Colorado used to be part of what's called um, the Intercontinental Seaway, which is a large sea area that covered most of what is today the central United States, and we have a lot of uh, marine fossils in those areas uh, that show that. Um, okay, so uh, if we could maybe get the fossil fossilized thing back, I'm going to start putting these away. Um, so oh, you have them all labeled too. Yeah, I, I had them all labeled. I'm, I'm sort of messing it up now. Here. <laughs> you Your roommate's going to be so mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's fine. She doesn't need the label. She can just look at them and know exactly what they are. <laughs> All right. Put them back in the right Here. spot. Oh, oh, thanks, Becky. Yeah, could you put that over there? Yes. Um, so, you know, one of the big things with fossils, though, that I was trying to point out is that there's a lot of that remineralization. There's a lot of this, you know, where the structure of a living creature is replaced by rock. And the shape of the creature still exists, so we can still see just what the shape was, but the actual material has been replaced with some kind of a, a rock piece, right? Mm -hmm. So when we think about fossil demos like the one that we're doing, it's really, it's much harder to create that reality of fossils. It's much easier to create that, hey, we just made a cast of this creature, right? Uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a fossil that just shows the shape of it on the outside. But it's not as though the chocolate is really going to replace the gummy worm. Right, right, and leave us with like a chocolate gummy worm. And so that's sort of the, the thing about these demos is that there's a limitation. Oh, and here's my producer here. Oh man, you guys, I don't know if it's solidified enough. 
for us to go ex excavating. But I still think, edible, though. I think yeah, we can probably <laughs> eat it. So <laughs> let's see how how solid are we here? Uh, uh, uh. The edges are getting solid. Oh, that's so gooey. That's so gooey. Okay. Well, this is what we're going to have to do. We will leave it here for now, and then if I have an opportunity later in the show and it solids up, I'll try to break you off a little piece of uh, ancient landscape. We can try to see if there's some fossils in there, okay? Sounds good. All right, cool. Well, sorry I yeah. couldn't show you the end of that there, uh, but hopefully we'll get a chance to on the show. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see you back in the Homework Hotline studio in just a couple minutes.